bigger isn't always better. Take insects. They're small, yet a cockroach can outmaneuver a human with a rolled up newspaper. Fleas can jump 200 times their height. And ants? Ants can move up to 40 body lengths per second. What if robots could have the same moves? With support from the National Science Foundation, engineer Sarah Bergbreiter and colleagues at the University of Maryland are building micro-robots, using insects as inspiration, starting with their legs. The objective of this project is to create legs that ultimately allow a millimeter-scale robot to traverse rough terrain at high speeds. Bergbreiter's robots are so small, her team uses a microscope to build them. So how do you build anything at this scale <laughs> is the question. So, uh, so we use the same processes that you use to make integrated circuits. So these are two legs. This is our jumping mechanism. Many insects jump to clear obstacles. So Bergbreiter is working to build that capability into some of the microbots. So what we can do is compress this and store energy in those rubber bands and release those for a jump. They test out different materials and designs on bigger bots before scaling them down. So we have a little magnetic leg robot. One challenge is determining how micro-robots should move around. So they test that in a preliminary design process using magnets instead of motors. This leg is made with a flexible silicone rubber. We have a kneecap here that prevents the leg from going in this direction, but it bends in this direction. And then we have a foot down here to basically push forward and walk. These so-called tiny turps can be used to study sensing and cooperation at small scales. It has two boards with a microcontroller, a gyroscope, and accelerometer. There's a battery here that it attaches with magnets. So ultimately we want sensors on them as well. Bergbreiter sees the microbots as mobile sensor platforms, carrying tools like cameras into small spaces for surveillance, microsurgery, to monitor the structural safety of buildings and bridges, and even deploying on search and rescue missions. So my picture is always, you have a bucket full of these small robots, you dump them into rubble after disaster, and they have just enough energy to find somebody and say, hey, dig over here. Tall orders indeed. It seems these tiny robot legs will have some big shoes to fill. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.